I think it's a great question. Um, so, so what I what I just argued is is that um, is that Twitter and a lot of its big data users have been successful in making that step towards towards generalizability. Um, but they don't. I don't think they specifically make that claim. They, they're saying, you know, this is still, this is what's happening on Twitter. Uh, but when one says this is what's happening on Twitter, does one make the connection of okay, so who who are the Twitter users? What are the demographics? Um, um, so so academically, which is which is something different from what I was just saying there at the end. Academically, um, there's been critique. So so. As I said, the demographics are skewed. Um, it's not a representative uh, sample. It's not public opinion. Um, so what is it? And um, and I and I think right now um, one makes one needs to make careful statements uh, and continue to make uh, careful statements uh, that that you know this is this is this is this is Twitter and. And Twitter has different, different, very, very different kinds of use. Well, uh, you can draw inferences from Twitter use in particular cultures more easily than in other cultures. Um, yeah, and this, and the same goes for, for the, uh, for you know, when one talks about the blogosphere or when one talks about other, other, other spheres. Um, so I think it's important to look into into the into the particular you know sort of like you know the cultures of use. Who the uh, the second thing is that um, there's a lot of interest in where tweets are coming from. So the, the geotagging. Now um, there's a very very low percentage of geotagged tweets. Less than one percent. In fact, the one of the resource people at the last year's Digital Methods Summer School, Matthew Zook, <coughs> from the University of Kentucky, is the one person who has the entire collection. He has every single geotagged tweet, um, which is which was like six. What was it? I forget what he said. Uh, it was six billion a year ago, but that can't be. That can't be because we have a billion and a half. So anyway. I don't know what the I don't know what the power of ten is, but uh, it's a it's a it's a it's a fairly large collection, and and you I don't know if you noticed the 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 flash Twitter studies that came out following the Ferguson riots in the U.S. Uh, similarly, um, there are any number of studies. This is Twitter as event following medium um, that then uh, uh, instead of using the hashtag and the keywords, um, use geotags. Uh, so, so the, so the geotag, whilst partial, the, ge the, the geotagged tweets are in some sense uh, one answer to, um, to the, the question of who are these tweeters. Right? Um, well, we, we, don't, we're not, we don't necessarily know their demographic, but we know where they are. And we know their activity vis-a-vis -vis, uh, what the normal level of activity is. So there's heightened activity. There are these number of, you know, these number of unique users with this, you know, so, so then you begin to, then you begin to, then you get into this idea of a, you know, of a convenience sample of, of some sort of, you know, a collection that's, well, a different, different means of making a collection and a different means of arguing about it, arguing its significance. Um, but yeah, I mean, there isn't a lot more than that. Right, ten years. Yeah. True. Yeah. Okay, yeah, good one, and 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 that also um, goes hand in hand with the rise of interest in, in like yeah, forensic sciences, 
um, at the same time. So, so a lot of a lot of the techniques to to study um, sort of fake content, let's say, are are the same means used to to study uh, fraud, like fraudulent bank transactions, and so so um, so the, the the typical the typical um, means by which to to study. Um, uh, there are two means by which you would then study, you know, quote unquote, fake content. The one is through social network or network analysis. So, so, um, so, bots tend to have particular kind of signatures, and and this is this is a developing uh, have network signatures. So they they tend to um, um, follow many and don't have many followers, or, or they or there might be in a bot net, uh, which then complicates the story, but nevertheless. And the second one is, is, um, is a, a lot of the verbatim retweeting, and this is something that uh, I was talking about in, during the break. Um, that's the second one. So when you have, ver when you have ver verbatim, so like ex exactly the same tweets in a particular space that appear again and again, um, you, um, you, you, you could have this sort of bot effect going on. or this. So you, one could downplay um, uh, uh, the you know the ver, ver, you know sets of verbatim tweets, so those are the two. I mean, ma maybe Eric knows uh, knows more, um, but nevertheless, to to you know these are challenges to, to using Twitter as a storytelling machine. Of course, yeah. Anybody else? Which critique? Representative, um, or the lack of representativeness. Um, if sure. Look at, uh, for example, the, the, the users of Facebook, uh, I, don't, I don't know the numbers actually right now of the users, for, uh, the percentage of the population, for example, for a country. But uh, if you would then assume that you could take, for example, queries as some kind of standardized questionnaire, you can just look at queries like standardized questions and then just take a random sample by taking every tenth user, for example, wouldn't that be some kind of a new form of standardized questionnaire for yeah. by mixed with social media? Um, that's, that's difficult to explain. Well, um, it assumes that there's a normal distribution like in the user realm, Facebook, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which there is not. Uh, so the, the random selection can be worse if you have a normal mm -hmm. distribution. But given who's on Facebook, of course, you can sample from it, and you can do it each tenth of like zoom over mm -hmm. incremental user IDs, which you can do in Twitter, but not in Facebook. Mm -hmm. uh, but given the who's on Facebook or who's on Twitter, you can still say something about that group, uh, taking into account what they are or what they can do on Twitter. Right? On Twitter, there is not an extensive profile. On uh, Facebook, there is. No, but like the, the the larger question that I think you're pointing to is 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 should we expect Twitter or Facebook or social media to stand in for for public opinion? You know, like why 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 would we? Um, um, should 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 like like should the should the new media be required to live up to the, that, those sorts of expectations? Uh, maybe I mean the web. There's the web, there's been so many different. I mean, this is also something that that I treat in the in the digital methods book. I think in um, in chapter two on the politics of links, there's been all these ideas historically about that have been projected onto the web. The web is public sphere. The web is this new space for politics. This web is, you know, empowering all these sorts of things. And and those are obviously huge uh, expectations. Um, <coughs> Which you know, I mean, the the web has been very, very disruptive. But but I don't, I don't the, that it has reorganized politics. I don't think so, or that it should have. Or similarly, um, um, I think 
I think what we're trying to do in, in this course and, and, and more generally is try to think about what research opportunities are available and, and not necessarily th think through the, pr the existing prism of, you know, uh, public opinion research. It's like, well, who, who said so? Um, we're actually trying to do something else. And, 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 um, or think about what is, what is possible. So, so, so any time that, that you have, um, uh, or when, when social media or when the web is asked to live up to, to certain research expectations, I think we, we also should ask ourselves the question of, of, of um, well, who's asking those questions? You know, is, is, it, is, is, it, is it felt that you know, that, that those particular fields are, you know, I don't know, under threat or, I don't know. I mean, in, in, in marketing research, there has been quite a shift um, to, to, um, um, to thinking about quite seriously using, using social media over, over focus, whatever, and, and, and quite a lot of efforts. Um, and I think a, there's, there's a lot of energy being put into, but using, but using Twitter instead of in, instead of uh, instead of polls for public for for to predict elections or to to follow uh, uh, um, the you know to spend campaign money. No, I don't think so. And and I, th I mean, most of the studies so far that have tried to look at, into you know correlations or or, or sort of see the extent to which which Twitter effects or Twitter dynamics are predictive. Um, they've they've all been disappointed. What's the what's the what's the famous? I mean, my favorite uh, article. What's that scientific article? I um, no. I went. I I I, I used Twitter. I uh, it, it's um it's a play on word. I I used. I used Twitter data to pred predict elections, but all I got was this lousy academic paper. Um, is the title of an academic paper, um, and and it and it reviews all of the studies. This is now maybe two and a half years. It reviews all of the studies to try to use Twitter as as predictive or as as a barometer or as you know, and and try and 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 the and the thing is is that in order to do so, one then imports these these particular techniques, which are fine. You know that the, these statistical sampling techniques, sort of you know these you know, all these sorts of things. But then it turns out um, that it's that that's very difficult to do. So how am I going to extract um, the 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 age and the um, you know all these the income and the and the gen well the gender we can do but but all of the various things that we need to know in order to begin to do the kind of research that we would do with public opinion research we don't have those fields or or we have open fields so we need to extract them with you know with quite difficult natural language whatever i mean i don't even, um, so so in any case twitter wasn't designed to do so um, but how else could it be used yeah of uh, how you could answer a question and then you you just predict something based on the, these these questions and sometimes predictions can, can fail for example if you look at the theory of the spiral of silence for example do you know that this theory you're assuming that the sample you're extract, extracting is representative like the and normally you, you assume something and then you have for, uh, for example in, in germany it's, it's it's famous in germany uh, there was uh, um, there was a poll about um, the, the outcome of uh, an election in Germany, and uh, people assumed that one party would win. But then, uh, I guess, uh, one week later, um, during the elections, uh, everything turned to the exact opposite side. So uh, they analyzed how this could be and how it could happen that it, it, um, in the poll could be a 
that role. Yeah. So, um, I mean, op um, <coughs> studying public opinion is maybe a, as well something biased. No, but it's more like it's more like um, so. How many times um, is um, like what's 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 Hillary Clinton's clout score, and how has that changed, um, and how is that compared to um, the other potential can Democratic candidates in the upcoming U.S. election? It's more straightforward than what you're saying. It's more, it's more like counting, you know, d developing metrics in order to figure out the influence of particular candidates. And then, and then do, does the, do, do those metrics map onto election results or polls, results of polls, and then results? And then, and then, and then do, are the metrics better than the polls in predicting the outcome? That's the question. It's more straightforward than what you're saying. It's more straightforward. But just one last thought, and then I'll go. Um, so on Facebook, uh, Demos, the, um, the, um, the London-based political think tank, used Facebook to survey extremists. And it was uh, sort of groundbreaking. Um, so, 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 they, so a researcher joined various extremist groups on Facebook and, and, um, and then placed an ad saying, you know, would you, with a, with a, with a kind of, uh, you know, kind of nationalistic flag as part of the ad. I mean, the ad itself was important, how it was actually done. Would you answer this survey? Um, and thereby got ex extremely rich and, and, uh, and interesting data on um, who these, who these extremists actually are, and where do they live, and what are their views, and what are their demographics. And so you can, you, you can use these platforms for social research, for <coughs> conventional social research as well. Yeah. OK, th um, that's it. So just a reminder, also tell your fellow classmates, people who aren't here, that next week uh, we have the final uh, lecture, which is a, which is a, a grand uh, <laughs> summary. Grand. Followed by uh, Cernke uh, Lorenzen, the, uh, the head of media analysis at Greenpeace International, who will tell us all how to do media analysis.